TCG exclusives in the recent years have mainly been new archetypes ranging from completely terrible like War Rocks to something you question the existence of like Danger. Or what if I told you it wasn't always like this? Today I'm going to be talking to you about the TCG exclusives from the GX and 5Ds era of Yu-Gi-Oh! But first, what is a TCG exclusive? TCG exclusives are cards that were included in the TCG versions of Yu-Gi-Oh! sets, but not in the OCG versions. Hence, why they're called TCG exclusives. It's quite simple, really. The first set to have a TCG exclusive was Strike of Neos, which had one exclusive, and that card is Grandmaster of the Six Samurai. This card and a lot of the following ones were also given out as promotion cards for sneak peeks, which meant that you were able to go to a participating store and buy five packs of Strike of Neos the week before its release, and also receive Grandmaster as a promo. Grandmaster was also included in this set as a secret rare. We're starting off strong this one, as Grandmaster was an incredibly powerful card at the time, and even today is still a playable in Six Samurai. This card caused Six Samurai to become a decent rogue pick in the format, and even won an SEC in the hands of fellow Yugi tuber Jonathan Moore, also known as House of Champs. Even though the SJC was held a year from Grandmaster's release, I think it's still worthy to note because of how good this card is. The next exclusive is from Force of the Breaker, and the card is Volcanic Rocket. Now, while this card didn't do much during its time as an exclusive, because, you know, it's a pyro monster, Volcanics have in the past topped YCSs with the addition of Blaze Accelerator Reload. It still shows how powerful this card could be given the right environment, and also it's a Volcanic card, so shoutouts to the main man Pain. After these two sets, things change up drastically. Tactical Evolution is the next set, and this is when things start getting a bit more interesting. This set introduced Ghost Rares, but also started something that I would share with the preceding sets for years to come, and that is including 10 TCG exclusives per set instead of just a one sneak peek promo. The promo for this set was Gemini Summoner. There's not much to say about this apart from the fact that it's not a very strong card. We had a bunch of fish support in this set like Ocean's Keeper, Thousand Eyes Jellyfish, Cranium Fish, and Abyssal King Shark. Unfortunately, none of these ever really saw much competitive success, much like the rest of the exclusives in here. The only noteworthy card in here is Eel Blood, which saw some experimentation in zombie decks during its release. Next we have Gladiator's Assault, which had Gladiator Beast Octavius as the sneak peek promo which is once again not very good, but that's actually a good thing in this case because Glider Beast did not need any more support from this set. This set's exclusives were really cool because three of them were designed by fans in an old promotion called the Design Your Destiny Card Contest, which involved fans sending an artwork and nothing else, and the winning artworks would be featured on cards. These three cards were Dragon Ice, Tongue Twister, and Screech. Unfortunately, none of these cards ever really saw much play apart from Dragon Ice, which was something you could play in Mermail decks back in the day. The other promos were very similar, as they weren't too amazing. However, there's one promo that was actually extremely powerful, and that is Test Tiger. Remember when I said Gladiator Beast did not need any more support? This is what I was alluding to. This card was absolutely bonkers for Gladiator Beast, and really gave them a huge push competitively. It essentially let you get two Gladiator Beast effects off in the same turn, while only needing one Gladiator Beast monster to do so. Honorable mention to Royal Firestorm Guards, because once again this was played in the Volcanic decks in 2015, and one is one of the best Pyro support cards to this day. Now, uh, let's talk about Phantom Darkness, Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG Booster Pack available now. Because the cards here are quite strong. First up, the sneak peek promo of this set was, believe it or not, Dark Greffer, which I don't think I need to give much of an introduction to. This card was bonkers at the time because of its interactions with cards like Destiny Here Malicious and is currently even limited on the Forbidden and Limited list. The crazy thing is that I don't think this is even the best sneak peek promo, which says a lot about the following ones. A lot of the other exclusives in here are just as good as Greffer also. There's Dark Lord Zerato, which was played in Dad Return decks, Lone Fire Blossom, which is an insane support card for plant decks and still holds up even to this day. There's Prime Material Dragon, which actually saw quite a bit of competitive play in Disaster Dragon decks between 2010 and 2011. And then we also have a few cards that frankly aren't worth talking about too much. Hey Vlad, you forgot one. What? Uh, oh, yeah, right. Uh, yeah, Allure of Darkness was in the set, by the way. Uh, yeah, that's a thing. Uh, still insane card to this day. Uh, it just made literally every single dark deck at the time uh, even more broken than they already needed to be. It made Return from a Different Dimension even stronger. 
and yeah, it, 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 it was it was limited for like a long time. This, I don't know. I don't know what was in their mind when they when they designed this card. This card's absolutely insane. Just read it. Draw two, banish a dark. Mental. Absolutely insane. Who are already thinking? Jeez. Light of Destruction had a lot of shoes to fill in terms of the TCG exclusive spots, and I'm unfortunately disappointed for the most part. The only noteworthy cards are Arcus and Eren, which saw play in Lightsworn decks as nice utility options, but weren't overpowered by any stretch of the imagination. The Duelist Genesis was just as lackluster with its exclusives. Avenging Knight Parshat was the sneak peek promo, which in fairness did see some play in extra decks at the time. But nothing else was too crazy. Herald of Orange Light saw some play in Fairy decks, Hand of the Six Samurai also saw some play in the Six Samurai decks, but there isn't anything else really to talk about. Okay, yeah, Charge Life Brigade is also in the set. This card is pretty ridiculous. This card was on the balance for quite a long time. However, believe it or not, this card actually didn't end up winning events till much later after its release. The problem is that, well, the Duelist Genesis kind of had other decks that were overpowered. And this was Teladad. This this came out in prime Teladad format, so unfortunately Chai Chai Light Brigade didn't have that much time to shine. However, it did top the SJC. It was the first legal for in the hands of, once again, fellow Yugi Tuber, Asian Persuasion 2008, who came top eight with his Light Sworn deck. Crossroads of Chaos comes next with its promo being Rose Warrior of Revenge. This card was cool at the time, and believe it or not, actually saw quite some play in decks because it was a level 4 warrior tuner that had okay stats. There's actually a few other neat exclusives in here. First we have Gladiator Beast Retiari, which helped Gladiator Beast deal with graveyard threats, and then we have Tempest Magician, which is currently banned due to its abuse in FDKs. And then we have Treasure Shuffle, which is a very strong card in tandem with Trap Tractor Flesia later on in Yu-Gi-Oh's history. And then every other exclusive in here isn't the most interesting at all. Quick honorable mention though to Overdrive Teleport which does see some experimentation here and there, most notably in Extra Deck Monarchs in 2016, and even in Modern Yu-Gi-Oh with Virtual World. Even though it's not very good, but you know, we, 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 still, we still take a note of it. Crimson Crisis doesn't really deliver anything crazy in terms of exclusives, they're kind of just there. Totem Dragon was a cool card I guess. I I think this card saw some play in dragon decks, but don't quote me on that. It's the same story for Raging Battle and Ancient Prophecy for the most part. Ancient Prophecy had XX Saber Full Helm Knight, which is a very good card in X Saber decks, but apart from that, nothing in these sets were too great. Honorable mention to Pseudo Space as it was used in the dreaded Monarch FTK decks of early 2016. Stardust Overdrive had some pretty dog breath exclusives also, ranging from Monkey to Reptilian to more Gemini cards, but it did have this. Oh my god, this card. I hate this card. I just don't even want to talk about Gateway, please. Just for love of god, can we just skip Gateway of the Six? I can't believe this was an exclusive. This card is something that you'd see as an April Fool's joke, but it actually ended up in the printing machines by accident and they were, weren't able to rectify their mistake. I only have terrible memories of this card that I will suppress for the next 10 years of my life. Let's move on. Absolute Power Force steers us back into place with fine exclusives. The most noteworthy cards here are Super Nimble Mega Hamster, which saw quite a bit of competitive play due to its ability to tutor cards like Raikou from the deck, and XX Saber Emmer's Blade, which was a must include in X Saber decks at the time. And then we also had Baby Abyss Dweller. That's kind of cool, I guess. And then there was peace in the Yu-Gi-Oh! ecosystem. Or so we thought until the Shining Darkness gave us XX Saber Bogart Knight, Dark Soul, Infernity Barrier. All three of these cards qu saw quite some play. And do note that Dark Soul at the time of its release was able to use its effect multiple times per turn if the same Dark Soul was brought back and sent back to the graveyard again, allowing you to gain an insane amount of advantage in one turn. This, coupled with the other X Saber cards in the set, made this deck a powerhouse in the competitive scene. Same goes for Infernity Barrier, which was an incredible card for Infernity decks and still holds up well even to this day. What do you know? Omni Negates are good. Well, I'll be. 
Duelist Revolution didn't give us much of value in terms of TCG exclusives, except Scrap Archfiend, I guess, which was a nice level 7 synchro option that saw some play in Infernoid decks as it was a non-effect monster. And then we have Star Strike Blast. Fun fact, did you know that Droll and Lockbird and Skullmeister are both TCG exclusives? These are strong hand trap options that are good in modern Yu-Gi-Oh! An important thing to note though is that these cards were actually very weak when they first came out. So it's kind of crazy to think that over time these cards kind of just aged like fine wine. Gravekeeper's Recruiter was in here also, which was a very good boost to Gravekeeper decks, as it gave you a nice card to summon from Spy that was not Descendant. The other exclusives aren't really great, with the exception of Cyblocker, which has some seen some play here and there in some formats, and there's also Kwaki Meru Wall, which did see play in Rock Stun. Storm of Ragnarok is the second last set that I'll be going over today. This set has quite possibly Yu-Gi-Oh's most controversial card in its entire history, and that is... No, we're not- no, no, not that one, you idiot! We're talking about- Yes. This card. Max C. This was a TCG exclusive. I know. What are they thinking? Quite ironic, isn't it? The card that the TCG made is now illegal in its region, but in the OCG, the card is alive and well and not even on the Forbidden Limited list. This card was always going to be a ticking time bomb as Yu-Gi-Oh evolved. Cards like Maxi only got stronger and stronger, and it was only a matter of time until this card became a bit too powerful. I'm not going to talk about it more than this because I don't want another war in the comments section where people argue whether or not this card should be legal today. The only other noteworthy TCG exclusive in here is Chaos Hunter, which does see some play every now and again. And lastly, we have Extreme Victory, the last 5D set and it does not disappoint. Let's get the filler cards right out of the way. Esadari was a nice option for Gladiator Beasts, but it's no Geyserus. The other exclusives also aren't too exciting. Now we can get on to the batshit crazy cards. Let's start with what I believe is the best sneak peek promo ever, and that is Reborn Tengu. This card was insane for its time. It saw a huge amount of play in pretty much every single deck of its format, and eventually it was semi-limited due to its ability to replace itself whenever it left the field, whether it be from battle or from being synchroed with. This card was a headliner for the deck, Tengu Plant, which was the most dominant deck during this period. Tour Guide from the Underworld was also an exclusive in here. This was such a unique card in the fact that it was a 1 card rank 3 with not too much investment. This card was an absolute staple throughout most of the XYZ era of Yu-Gi-Oh and for very good reason. Even today, this card still sees play, which kind of baffles my mind. This card's gone from 3 to 2 to 1 to 2 to 3 to 2 to 1 to 3 again. I don't even know what's going- I don't even know what where it is on the list anymore. It moves on the list more times than Mali does. And there you have it. All of the TCG exclusives from Yu-Gi-Oh's early history. If we hit like two likes, I'll make a second part of this where I go over the exclusives from the XYZ and Pendlemare. I've been Vlad, and I'll see you guys next time. 07.